but it's even bigger. For example, on his on his seminar, he, Tamari says something very interesting about a joke that he used to make. You know, on the first videos that that you can find uh, on YouTube about Tamaris performing on on TV, you can find him. You know, like very formal with the with mm. with the uh, with the hairstyle. You know, like very very mm. posh. Mm. You know, with the, this those glasses. You know, like they, they look like the the up the the you know like the top of of a glass. You know, <laughs> and mm. uh, and and the thing. The, the thing the thing is uh, Tamaris used to make a joke you know like instead of doing uh, instead of saying like I cover my eyes I don't see anything he used to remove his, his glasses um he actually didn't see anything so he used to say I don't see anything I don't see anything and people were laughing a lot you know with it was with his personality mm-hmm. so after many years he was doing this joke and he was getting the same reaction so he got a medical intervention on his eyes. And, and suddenly he was doing the joke and the joke didn't work in the same way. Mm. All right, guys, welcome yet to another podcast. Wait, 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 wait. You forgot the most important part. One, what? two, three, live. Oh my god. <laughs> Go. All right guys, welcome back to yet another podcast. And um so before we start, god damn it. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Okay, yeah. Okay guys. So, <clears throat> welcome to this week's podcast. Alvaro is uh, fucking me over. As he uh, as is his job in the entire company, good job, Elbro. So, um, before we start the episode, I want to thank uh, Raynan <laughs> Kamal, Jin, Daniel Tro, Brendan Hong Lim, Mohammed Nayat, Kuere Young, Shimon, Fritz Alkamade, Jeffrey van Vliet, Radek Pekni, and Steve Brownlee for supporting our Patreon page and keeping this podcast in the air. And, and Steven Seagal for his movies as well. Yeah, he's great. I'd also yeah. like to thank the Beatles, especially John Lennon. Yeah. I'd also like to thank the guy that shot John Lennon, just, just because, you know, we have so many great music now and didn't become shit. Yeah, thank you, Joe Kono, for stopping the thing, you know, before they start producing shit music. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Joe Kono. Oh. Yeah, go, 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 go for it. So, Elvaro had this, um, this idea to review a video or an idea from this book. Because um, a few years ago, or actually I think it's already more over 10 years ago maybe, a movie got released, a documentary called Our Magic. And in Our Magic, Tamaris talks about one of the ideas from the magic rainbow called the seven fields of magic. And we already for longer wanted to do this idea of reviewing sort of magic videos online and telling you the value of it. But in a podcast format, that's sort of hard. For YouTube, that's great. But for people listening, it's a bit more difficult. But since Tamaris talks in his wonderful English, uh, we can all hear it and understand it. And even when you're listening. So we thought to just let's go through them and then I guess share our experiences with each film. Yeah. Yeah. You want to say anything about it, Alvaro? Yeah, um, well, the book, The Magic Rainbow, uh, was built with different, um, yeah, that book, with different essays, articles um, that he was, uh, he was um, reading, you know, in the, in the past and, uh, and with new contents. But the thing is, the, 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 the story or, or the the essay about the seven veils it's it was very famous in in the spanish community and out of spain as well and we actually spanish magician we, we, we magicians we we love this because it's like a, an act of love of magic mm. you know uh, so so i think it can help you a lot to 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 know more about how you should um, you know a face to, a, a, you should be placed you know face to face to magic and how you should work magic 
So do you think that's also the reason why the book is so, um, why the Seven Fields are so famous in Spain, that it's an act of love, or are there more reasons? Well, the, for sure it's one of the reasons, um, there are many others, but, but if you want, we can start with the, with the video and then we can, we can stop, or, or after the video we can try to, to go deeper with, with this, but, but yeah, this is one of the reasons. Uh, but yeah, the, the book is an, an awesome book, you know, it's... Uh, he was working on the book for more than 30 years, so you can imagine. All right. <clears throat> well, let's get into the video then. Yeah. Of mystery. <laughs> mystery of the love, because if you don't love your art, you, mm, you cannot express yourself. You cannot express something. That, with your, without love. It's very, very important to love the passion of the art. The audience, how they know that this man or this woman love magic really. They know, but how they know is a mystery for me. The second one for me. I mean, yeah. Tamaris' well, English is awesome. <laughs> well, there, there's something interesting here. Um, uh, the theory is called the seven veils, veils because mm -hmm. He says, like there are, there are like seven seven mysteries, you know, mm -hmm. and these mister uh, mysteries are covered by seven veils, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm, these veils are, are covering, you know, like an answer, you know, and this answer, mm -hmm. these answers are like the answers of a question, and the question is uh, are related to, for example, in this case. Uh, the, the veil of the of the um, the mystery of of the of the love. So Tamari mm -hmm. says, if you love what you do, you are going to transmit this 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 love, you know, to the audience, and they are going to receive mm -hmm. it, and they they are going to feel it, you know. Um, they it's it, he doesn't know. We we can't we can't really know how they are going to to receive it or or or, mm -hmm. or how to to transmit it. But for sure, somehow you are going to receive it and you are going to to transmit it, you know, to to convey it. So, mm. so that's why, you know. So it's very that's, interesting because that's a very weird thing, right? That when you really love something, <clears throat> the other person can feel that you love it. And you could even talk about the most boring subject in the world, or, or but at least like, you know, if if I hear about gardening, for example, I don't think that's particularly interesting. It doesn't excite me. But I guess you could have someone that's like really into gardening, like a botanist or something, and that's going to talk about it in such a way that you go like, whoa. Yeah, my mom or my grandma, uh, the, my grandma used to talk about gardening, you know, uh, and I, I used to, to be like, oh my God, this is the most interesting <laughs> thing in the world. Yeah, yeah totally. <clears throat> yeah, let's go with this again. Yes. The yeah. of the knowledge. If you, know, know more about this tree, about the, the author, about him, about the history of the tree, and the more you know, more you, magic is more deep for the people, and the people feel this. How they feel and how, I don't know. It's another mystery, the second one, third one for me. And I think that that's a very important point. Um, Jin, uh, in one of the magazines, he wrote about René Lefant. Because yeah. he talked with some students about from René Lafon. And they basically, one of the lessons René taught them is to, to become a deep person, to read outside of magic, to live your life, and to get like an essence, right? Because magic is sort of an expression of yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> or any art, because it's a performance art. You're always communicating yourself as a person to the other people, but in this case, true magic. And then knowing more about it, also in this case, with knowing more about the trick, without anyone knowing it, you will feel that this person is knowledge. Just like you give, there, there was this experiment where they give a university professor and an actor, and the university professor wrote like the whole script, read for a lecture, and they let both people do the, the, the lecture. And from the university professor, like you could feel like this person lived this, this person experienced this, and he knows what he's talking about. Where from the actor, you would, everything was phrased the same way, it was spoken out the same way, but you still felt hmm, something feels wrong. Like you're just reading, <coughs> so just saying words. Yeah. 
there, there's a um, a lecture that you can you can watch on YouTube about uh, one of the most important chefs in in the world. He's called mm. Ferran Adria, and he's lecturing in Harvard. Mm. So in Harvard, they they invite a lot of people from different subjects, you know, and different uh, brands of, 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 of science and, and knowledge. And, well, so this guy was talking about creati creativity, you know, and, mm. and he says in, in this lecture that the, the, the fundamental thing in creativity is the knowledge, you know, you know and studying. Mm. So he starts the, the lecture with an orange and with a question. He says, who, can, uh, who is this? And everyone, you know, says an orange. Okay, what kind of 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 you know uh, food is is this one? You know, a fruit. Yeah, but what kind? What type? And um, people citric. Okay, how, how how many kinds of citric do you know? And um, people three and five. Huh? Okay, so at the end of of the thing, you know, the conclusion of this was like there were more than. 200 or 300 of citrix mm -hmm. and we only knew you know four or five and the thing is he was asking where where they come from and many people saying from valencia from from spain many mm -hmm. others from in in the in the states yeah? or many mm -hmm. other from from latin america from and they said well this kind of orange uh, come from from china how many dishes mm -hmm. do you know in chinese cuisine with orange, zero, mm. zero. So the thing is, it, it's remind me something that I experienced with Tamaris when I read sub, uh, his books. Because mm. when I was reading Mnemonica, I learned more on the uh, at the end of the book, you know, with the notes, with the references, mm. or in the middle of the of the pieces of magic with the uh, additional ideas that he mm. he was giving because he knew a lot and actually almost everything about the the origin of the thing uh complementary ideas people who mm -hmm. who were giving him you know like mm, more more and more ideas and that's why in my opinion it's very important giving the good references because if you read a very good good uh, a very good uh, book of magic you're reading the book that you are reading and the book that the author has written mm -hmm. that's right you know so so yeah so um, that's why for me it's that it's so important so yeah but that's that's a good point right because also what you're saying is to also read a magic book to understand the book in a deeper sense and to learn about the trick and to learn maybe subtleties or certain ideas like this person is this idea this person is this idea little touches little subtleties which then later translate into you knowing more about the trick being able to do the trick better but also just making you a better magician. And you might not even remember ever reading about the trick, but probably these, these little things, they will stay with you. Yeah. And they're also transferable into other tricks. Yeah, yeah. Let's Sorry. go for the third fail. Yeah, yeah. The mystery of the world. More work you put in a effect, in a trick, in an illusion, in a dream, more strong and more reaction and more deep Creation and more remain in the feeling and the emotion of the spectator. How they know that you put more effort or more work? They don't know, but they feel. And this is a mystery. Another one is the. <laughs> I love Tamaris' English. How they yeah. know? I don't know, but they feel. <laughs> and this is a mystery. He is awesome, <laughs> He is amazing. Yeah. Actually, Tam uh, Tamaris has has performed in, in many different languages, you know, like in mm -hmm. Italian, in, in English, in French, in, in Gallego as well, in Cat <laughs> Catalan, in, I think in Portuguese as well. Um, I think in, in any of it. So, so in, in a moment when, in an era when, when, when in Spain, you know, it was very mm -hmm. difficult to, to get the access to, to study languages, you know? So yeah, but so, I mean, I mean, if you read his books, you immediately see that this is a very intelligent man. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's that's what I'm what I'm saying. It's like he, 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 he actually, it's very good that we are talking about this 
in the third uh, veil, you know, and, uh, in the third mm -hmm. mystery, because he's talking about work and the the biggest secret, what isn't a secret, is like Tamar is a hard worker. Oh, yeah. He's insanely hard worker. It's like... Dude, it's like... It's... Um... I read that Routine is Sonata, the um, Hypnotic Jokers, his Everywhere and Nowhere. Yeah, routine. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's even more amazing than the routine, yeah, the story, <laughs> like like the whole timeline of then I came up with this and then this happened, like 15 years or something? Yeah, 13 years, I think so. Yeah. 13, yeah. Just, just, huh. just developing this routine, and that's amazing because so much stuff right now, I mean, I do it as well sometimes. It's like you come up with an idea and you publish it. Yeah. But... Sometimes I do it because I think the idea is good enough to be published and for other people to play with. But I almost always regret it <laughs> because almost always after I published it, I'm performing more and I'm playing more with it. And then I'm like, fuck, I came up with this idea, which was great, or this little subtlety or thing. So like that's that to me is like why this fail of work is so important. Because the more you spend with the routine, the better it becomes, the more... It becomes you the more subtleties you figure out or little details which really make a big difference yeah and um, there's something interesting you know like on tamaris uh, lectures he he talks about you know like exits uh, exits uh, for mm. for mistakes you know so you can really realize you know how how deep he works when when you see you know like he has he ha he's having you know a little mistake or or something is is going wrong for some reason mm -hmm. and and he's you know perfectly reconducting the situation you know and mm -hmm. he's a workaholic you know it's <laughs> i think this is a very good definition you know he 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 work very very hard mm -hmm. yeah I mean, if you read his books, it's immediately, you immediately yeah. realize that. The mystery of the energy. Sometimes we perform, I perform, and other magician with only this in a theater of 1,500 people. And the last one must feel the energy you have, not only physical, but also spiritual, spiritual inside. Spiritual. Well, the five uh, mystery for me is... Uh... <laughs> it's a very funny interview. Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, say it again. Tell me, tell me. No, no, say it, say it. No, I was just laughing. Good go. Uh, <laughs> there's a very funny interview, and um, where where there's a reporter ask asking Tamaris, what's what's most uh, what's more difficult, you know, like fooling a single guy or fooling five hundred people, and the answer that Tamaris uh, gives is amazing. He says, if the people sitting at the end of the theater can't really see it's easier in the theater <laughs> you know like if they are very far you know <laughs> so yeah but but this is a joke but the the point here is mm -hmm. like i've been seeing tamaris in many many different uh, situations um actually i remember watching uh seeing tamaris on the theater and the following mm -hmm. day walking uh, on the street talking with some friends and a friend of mine saying oh uh, there is uh, there is a uh, one t uh, one remaining ticket if you want to use it is uh, for tamaris and i said yeah i i, I saw the I, I went to the show yesterday but i'm, I'm gonna uh, i'm gonna go to today again and and i was uh, upstairs you know like in the upper mm -hmm. circle you know very far and the energy was very high you know mm -hmm. So, so you can really feel it. And I think when he was pretty young, many people were, mm, were giving him some critics because because of the shouts and everything. But actually in the theater, it catchy, catches you. You know, it's like very mm. powerful. It's something that impresses mm. you a lot, you know? So it's, I, in my opinion, yeah, it has it's... to do a lot with the, with the energy. But it becomes an experience then. It's like this, this whole thing is like an extension of him and not just anymore... Uh... 
the cards you know the cards are cool and like but, but he convinces you then i guess with that energy that that all of this is really happening I'm like, Whoa. yeah yes it's awesome mystery of the truth of course the art in general is not true it's a fiction no not the real life a magic special no? especially you are lying lying all the time saying uh, do this i don't know this i have not here nothing but you have hidden something something or something but the more true is the thing that you do more true people feel this and i don't know how they feel but they feel and this is the final mystery this mystery is the yeah. mm -hmm. but that's also a good point right because um on the other hand there's also like Director Gadio has his video, which we can also watch after this if you want. It's yeah. the, um, the video of him on the future storytelling shoot. Yeah. And he says that magicians are inherently dishonest and that if a magician says something, I believe it's in this video, where he says that if a magician tells you something, you will automatically distrust him. Yeah. Because people think mm -hmm. we lie. So it's very powerful what he says, tell the truth. So. Also for me, like if I do an ace assembly and I switched out those aces already, like in the 100 to second ace from, for example, with Alex Amsley, I will never say, so we have those aces. I'll say, so we have those cards. Yeah. Right? Little nuance, but, but I don't want to lie to people. And <laughs> yeah, but, but it's even bigger. For example, on his on his seminar, he, Tamari says something very interesting about a joke that he used to make. You know, on the first videos that that you can find uh, on YouTube about Tamari's performing on on TV, you can find him. You know, like very formal with the with mm. with a uh, with the hairstyle. You know, like very very mm. posh. Mm. You know, with the, this those glasses. You know, like they, they look like the the up the the you know like the top of of a glass you know <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, and and the thing the the thing it, the thing is uh, Tamaris used to make a joke you know like instead of doing uh, instead of saying like I cover my eyes I don't see anything he used to remove his, his glasses um he actually didn't see anything so he used to say I don't see anything I don't see anything and people were laughing a lot you know with it was with his personality. Mm -hmm. So after many years, he was doing this joke and he was getting the same reaction. So he got a medical intervention on his eyes and, and suddenly he was doing the joke and the joke didn't work in the same way. Mm. And he was saying, when I remove my glasses, I can really see. I don't know why, but the, the joke doesn't work in the, in the same way. I think it's because I don't believe it. You know, I don't believe mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Exactly. It isn't that they are feeling that I can see. It's like that I don't believe, you know, what I'm saying. So, so mm -hmm. is what you say, you know, but believing even, even with things not related to magic, you know, that's why when, mm -hmm. when, when you dress up like someone that is in your age, it, it, it used to happen to me when I was a child and I used to, to, to dress up with, with a tie or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Or to many mm -hmm. others, you know. So when you pretend to be someone that you you aren't. Going back to Derek's book, the Dark Gadio, in the book he also talks about that, right? Like, um, which is a problem I sometimes have as well. Like, <clears throat> magicians telling stories, presentations, or things which are bullshit. Which is fun. Like uh, my friend Alan from Argentina, um, he actually is making a trick still in the making, because. You have this trick like the, the stolen deck, right? It's a great trick. It's uh, basically j just of two forces, but it's like you have this deck full of different cards. You have two random cards and they place those cards down and then they place it next to their mates. Like to the same cards from a different deck, stolen deck. Great trick. But everyone says, yeah, I have this deck. I collected, I went around the world and I collected all these cards. I'm like, yeah, but you're, you're like 12. I don't think so, man. <laughs> But, but Alan, he's actually, when he's jamming with magicians, he's consciously, from every single magician from their deck, he's palming a card. Just like when the deck table just plays with the deck, palms out a card, steals it, and gives the deck back. 
And like this, it's, it's a bit of a dick move, but but like this, he's like reassembling like on 52 stolen cards, which is then really a stolen deck. That's, yeah. So the presentation is true then. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's, but that's it's, true, and it makes it, mm -hmm. you know, it makes the story, you know, like more honest. Exactly, but also more personal. I think it makes it deeper. Yeah. But but I, I don't know if you have the same thing. But but sometimes like I, I said something for the sake of a presentation, but then after I said it, like I think to myself, ah, oh, no, that's bullshit. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like I think that that's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, and I, I guess people can feel that. Yeah, of course. Um, well, you can find everything. For example, in I'm going to say something like very... Uh, have you ever watched Amadeus movie? Who? Amadeus, the movie. No. About Wolf, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. No, no, I've never seen it. Well the the colors the um, i don't know the aesthetic the picture mm -hmm. of the movie the the film and the the interpretation mm -hmm. the environment everything is really good but they are lying all the time mm -hmm. they are lying all the time it happens the same with gladiator ha have you ever watched gladiator it's the same it's the same i love the movie i i can actually if I mean, we we could sit on the sofa on the couch and we could put the movie without a sound and I could just say the di dialogues, you know, <laughs> because I, I watched the movie many many times. But 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 everything is <laughs> almost everything is is a lie, you know, mm -hmm. on the movie. So so the thing is, it happens the same with mm, Dan Brown's uh, novels, you know, and this is a, a great problem, mm -hmm. you know. Because when you accept, you know, this kind of of things, you know, in in, in our discipline, we are crossing mm -hmm. a line, and, and the thing is, where is the limit of 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 this, you know? Because you are you are crossing mm -hmm. limits of fiction, you know. Even in mm -hmm. science fiction movies, they respect, you know, like some rules. Mm -hmm. But if you are trying to create like historical. Mo uh, movies and and you don't respect even the you you don't even respect the history what, what the mm -hmm. heck is going on you know but exactly so you could create something from this history but you still have to in some way honor like you can you can you can make up some things that happened i guess but you just have to honor like the real events like you cannot say this this didn't happen even though it did because this happened yeah basically yeah. But that's the, like that's an interesting point, right? Because like what what came up to me just now was that in books, in some way, we're still um, expecting to be deceived if it's a fiction book. Like this is bullshit. Um, where as magic is sort of, in most cases, um, grounded in reality. Right? It's like a fiction grounded in reality. So it's we do something which is realistically impossible, and that's why it's magic. So in that case, we should tell the truth, right? Because because we're not telling a fiction fictional story. Yeah. But the thing I wonder then is because because uh, we both like Gabi. Or adore Gabi, is how would you say? Because Gabi talks about fictional magic. Yeah. Is that lying then? Because he's saying here's here is a bubble, and in the bubble the reality works differently than for us. And that's a beautiful idea, but is that lying? It isn't a lie. It's a fiction. Mm -hmm. The where difference. Where is that line? Sorry. But where is that line? Well, the the difference is when when you take you know like things from real life. Mm -hmm. You know. You should try to to take things. And you can you can make omissions, you know, like don't don't really say, you know, like the everything, you know. Or for example, if you don't know, let's do something. For example, it, it this is very popular in movies. Okay, they take for example 
a, a character from from the Romans or from the e Egyptians or whatever, and they talk mm -hmm. about the sexual orient orientation or whatever. Okay. And they they probably don't know anything about the sexual orientation of this character. Okay. Mm -hmm. or they 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 have read some rumors about it or whatever, but they they take some freedom to talk about it. And they have built this. But if you if you know that uh, Julius Caesar uh, crossed the Rubicon River uh, this year, this day, whatever, and mm -hmm. and you and this is like something very obvious, and mm -hmm. and you're trying to lie about this, I think this is a huge mistake. But this is my yeah. opinion. Mm -hmm. This well, not my opinion. This is my point of view. I mean, the the, the thing is. Even you can take, you know, the, the same the same thing, but 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 you can't you can't try to manipulate, you know, like the real mm -hmm. thing, you know, because 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 people work with references. What I'm mm -hmm. saying is like people work with references. I mean, if you were if you, for example, create a movie and mm -hmm. e even knowing that a movie is a fiction, and I'm you know like a uh, swimming. And mm -hmm. I am, you know, under the water for mm, ten minutes. You know, it's like, yeah, it can be a fiction, but for me, it's going to be like very difficult to believe that. But because you really know, you have tried that, you, that, 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 and you know that it's mm -hmm. impossible to be for more than whatever minutes. But the thing is, maybe you don't really know anything about history, and if you don't know mm -hmm. anything about Julius Caesar and crossing the Rubicon thing. Maybe you don't have this doubt. So they think mm -hmm. the line is about your knowledge about these mm -hmm. things, you know. But but that's why it's very important to imagine. I want to do an homage to like a tribute to to Hoffinger, and I'm performing, for example, okay, and I'm performing mm -hmm. the diagonal palm shift. It's like what the fuck. Mm -hmm. We we don't have any reference of Hoffinsters performing the Lionel Palm shift. Mm. So true. I don't know. I don't know. So what you're saying then, in some way, is that um, lying is manipulating something real, so which we which we know to be true or not true. Like with the example of him saying, "I cannot see anything," but he had the intervention on his eyes, so maybe he can see something. And he says, I can't see anything and it doesn't work anymore because now it's a lie because he's manipulating something true and before he was telling the truth. Whereas the creating the fiction is something which which we which didn't exist essentially before. Or something in which we all sort of know it's not true, but it could be. Yeah, it's a fiction, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, that's interesting. You wanna go to the sixth mystery? Yeah, of course, please. <laughs> tell your world more rich is the jury in tell your world. Feel this, and I don't know how they feel, but they feel, and this is okay. the kind of mystery. Which is when the bit back. The is the in tell your world more rich is the jury in tell your world. More people like your magic, more they feel your magic. In tell your world, there is no interesting. Uh, you can be a good communicator, a good showman. But not a good artist. It's not so. It's not the same. In the seventh mystery. See, so that's also like really important. But it also like goes a bit back to what we were saying about the knowledge, right? But knowing yeah. more shows you're deeper. But this goes even further. Like like back to what Jin wrote about Rene. Learn more about life. Learn things you find interesting. Find passions outside of magic. Which I also talked about in one of the podcasts I did on the Patreon. But books are a great way for this. That's what I, but this was basically what the podcast was about. They're a great way to build a deeper interior world. Because now we're, we have this opinion of some geniuses which have lived in our times and before. Like the thing you shared about Albert Einstein. Like we, we have his opinions. Like this man was insane. But also insanely genius. You know? <laughs> Yeah. So that's 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 freaking amazing. We have his opinions. We can learn how he viewed the world, and we don't have to just look at <laughs> the media. And in that way, like not the media is bad, but but 
could be could be bad uh, but i'm not going to start that discussion right here um but that's the thing everyone else gets to see but you get to do research everyone else doesn't get to see you get to develop your own opinion your own way of viewing the world and this could make you a much more interesting person much more outspoken but even if it wouldn't be better for your magic it would be better for yourself i think but luckily it's better for both so hey yeah there's something like do you know the difference be between having a a professor, a teacher in magic, and having a mentor in magic or a master in magic? A master and a mentor, or do you mean a master and a teacher? Uh, you know, it, you you can say this person is my teacher, you know, or mm. this person is my master, like my mentor, my my sensei. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but I still see mentor and master a bit different. But but go on, yeah. Uh, um the thing is with your teacher you talk about about the the subject you know mm -hmm. with your mentor or your or your master your master mm -hmm. is like a bigger word you talk about mm -hmm. anything else as well mm -hmm. so it's about him sharing his inner world mm -hmm. so yeah. that's why it's not possible that any teacher any teacher can't be you know like a mentor or um, mm -hmm. because because maybe his his philosophy isn't that deep, you know. Mm -hmm. The thing is, if you have a philosophy teaching, this philosophy should be able to be applied to the rest of the aspect in your life. Yeah, and you might also not feel that person then. Yeah, because I mean, you might you you might have someone that you really you really enjoy the way they do sleight of hand. And you think, that's amazing, you know, I want to be able to do that. But then maybe you don't connect with the way that they look at the world. Yeah. And in that way, they cannot, like, they cannot teach you more than just the slides. Yeah. Okay. Seventh yeah. mystery. Yeah. Me is the mystery of love. But I told the first is love. And the last one is love. I Surprise. think it's important. The love to the audience to the other people, because it's not only a question to, I do this and you applaud me. It's not the most important, the most important is the love to the other, no? And the love to the audience is all seven mysteries that I don't know. I don't know how they know, but they know. Sure, sure. They are the, for me, seven, very discovered seven mysteries in magic, and for me they are very important. That's something very interesting. He he talks about his mentor Fraxon. Mm. He was a, a great magician. He was awesome. Um, before the shows, Fraxon he used to go to the curtain, you know, and he used to to open the curtain a little bit, and he used to to see every single face in the audience. Mm -hmm. You know, repeating to himself, you know, very, very, very low, you know, saying, I love you guys. We are going to have a great time together. When mm. the courtroom opens, this is going to be amazing. We are really going to enjoy, enjoy this experience. Mm -hmm. I really love you. Then he closed the, the courtroom. He used to, to be concentrated on them. So, mm -hmm. so Tamaris always talks about this. So when he gets out, you know, I, um, he he he's always laughing, you know, and I'll say, Hello everyone, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah. mm. And with music, it's you just know, happy, <laughs> happy to see all of you. Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> there is uh, also a story in how to win friends and influence people about um I don't know which magician it is anymore, just my mind's blank on this right now. But about a magician who was pretty famous also. Um that also used to do the same thing. Well, not look out, but just before this, every show, he would say to himself, I love you. I love you. Like to his audience, I love you. I love you. I love you. Like, and then thank you for being here or whatever, and then go out. Right? Probably Fraxon, because Fraxon used to work in Central Europe and in the States. Hmm. He was most famous out of Spain and in Spain. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, look at, I'll look at uh, I'll look I'll look it up later for you. Yeah, it was. Nice. But I don't think it was Fraxon, but 
Yeah. If you want to watch Derek Del Gaudio's videos, well, we can we can do it. Oh, sure thing. Yeah. Do you have anything else about the seven films? Yeah, um, I remember once when I was quite young, you know, uh, a couple of times, you know, analyzing the veils with with other magicians who used to meet Tamaris when they were young, and they used to to live or visit uh, Madrid, you know. And they used to to study the veils with Tamaris, you know, mm -hmm. every week. Um, really? Yeah, and it was yeah because in the past they used to to have meetings on Mondays and on Tuesdays with Ascani and Tamaris. So imagine. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and uh, pff, the same week, and you have like the magic circle as well. Um, yeah, it was. But, but I mean, that also shows you how deep that was, right? Because yeah. let's see, here it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pages in the book, right? Or the video, like three or four minutes. But you say they studied it every week. Yeah, it's, I mean, what what they told me was like, Mm, some people were studying, you know, like the, the veils, you know, like in different aspects or, or of, of the mm. learning process, you know, like, for example, let's work uh, an idea, you know, so let's mm. work, for example, uh, on the knowledge, you know, and how many references do you know about this? So they were working on the references or this kind of things, mm. you know. So it's very interesting because when you show Tamar is a, a version of a, of a piece of magic, he always talks. He always has this reaction. Mm -hmm. Very well. And then, if you ask him for an opinion, he thinks, "Well, because you, there was a version, yeah, but before." So he's thinking out loud, and he starts doing like all the references of the piece of magic that you have done. All of them, and you are like that, taking notes, you know. <laughs> and then the conclusion is like the first one was the the best one. <laughs> and you just take your deck of cards, you you put it on 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 the on the case, and you just cross your your, your, your hands in the corner yeah. and cry. <laughs> yeah, saying like I feel feel you know. It's <laughs> It's like what, what? Yeah, yeah, but but he's amazing because he's he, he always goes, you know, from from your version to the beginning, you know, and then he says why, you know, and um, he's very analytic. It's it's really nice. There, there's a story that um, that's a friend of mine used to tell, you know, to tell us. He, he usually tell um, about Roberto Jobi doing mm -hmm. uh, performing a, a routine on Cadiz, in the south of Spain. He was performing something. Hey guys, look, I have this idea. I, I've been working on this, but it isn't finished. But but I think I, I'm very happy with with the idea. He was performing, and everyone was like, "Oh, you know, very cool, very cool." Tamaris was like this, and he said, "What about this, Roberto? Try to move this packet here, then uh, this script. Try to change this sentence for this other." And the face of Roberto was like. No, it isn't my routine. It's Tamaris's routine. You know, like it's totally different. It's perfect now. <laughs> and the rest of them were like, "What the heck?" You know, in, in three minutes. You know, <laughs> um, and yeah, Tamaris has this, you know, these mm. skills. You know, to to change everything. No, no. Yeah, so that. That one is really, really good. This is one of my favorite videos out there still. That one and Opa Gangnam Style as well, right? Opa Gangnam Style. <laughs> yeah. About that, we actually, uh, when I was traveling uh, around Europe, we were in this uh, hostel in, uh, in Milano. And there was this Chinese guy, I know this, this Korean guy called Kim, great dude. And we gave him a lot to drink because we were playing poker with drinks. 
And then at one point, the karaoke started. And we're like, Kim, can you do Gundam style? He was like, oh, yes. And we're like, <laughs> you know? And we went on and he knew every fucking word of the song. And everyone was going crazy because we had this Korean guy like perfectly doing karaoke to Gundam style. <laughs> Go ahead, my Tucker. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Derek, it's Matthew Thompson. Hey, Matthew. I saw your email about the future of storytelling shoot. Yeah, I just have uh, some concern that people are gonna are gonna see it and think that I'm a magician. But aren't you a magician? Yes but that's not the point. Magicians used to tell stories that, that really mattered to the world. Magicians used to be ahead of technology. They used to be at the forefront of mathematics and science. At some point, that information became widely accessible and more commonplace, more everyday. We started seeing less and less magic in the world and more tricks. It's difficult to be a storyteller and be a magician because no matter what you say, it's always colored with the lens of, well, he's trying to deceive me. He's up to something. He's not telling me the truth. People have a preconceived notion of what a magician is. So exactly this, like he's trying to deceive me. He's not telling the truth. Yeah. They automatically assume that a magician keeps secrets from people. You know, a real magician keeps secrets for people. They use that secret to create a moment of astonishment or a moment of transformation. And the secret becomes a hidden narrative. Imagine a guy sitting at a table just dealing some cards. You don't really have anything to think other than he's bored and he's, you know, throwing cards into a pile. But what changes that? If you turn the top card face up, all of a sudden, it's not so simple. It's a guy practicing, and he's not just a guy sitting at a table, he's a guy who has a skill set. He's up to something, and there's these two dialogues running parallel with one another, one that they can see and one that's implicit. And it's just knowing when to reveal that second dialogue that transforms a story. So maybe we could do something like that. Great. Let's shoot that. Then again, I don't want to give them the wrong idea. Magic doesn't exist in the, the hands of a magician. It exists in the minds of the audience. When I was a, a kid, I, I saw a guy take a pocket knife and make it vanish, and it blew my mind. It was this moment of pure wonder that got me hooked. The more I read, the more I learned, the further I got from that feeling. There was a point where I had to start fighting to get back to that place of wonder. I realize now that the moment of magic wasn't in the moment of him opening his hand and showing it's gone. It's the moment right before that, when I believed it was gone, and then he just validated my belief. For me, that's what matters, because in that moment, magic isn't a trick. Magic is a synonym for hope. makes any sense but that's kind of the way I look at it that's such a good scene but did, did you understand the, the reference of the hand with the knife yeah from the book from um, the no. guy in the store with the rusty old pocket knife the magic store yeah. he used to work in yeah yeah well there, but, there's something but then go 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 sorry go i i really like the shift in context of whether a, a real magician is not keeping secrets from people but he's keeping secrets for people yeah and that's such a good context or at least in my opinion because very often in magic, in one point or another, we think, oh, look at it. some people, look at how clever I am. Look at how good I am. I understand this. You don't understand this. Yeah, dee da, dee da. But 
it's actually such a wonderful thing that not not that to look at how good and great <laughs> I am, but rather it's a wonderful thing that we can say. I have here this one really beautiful, um, amazing thing, which is impossible to explain. And then you do it, right? And they're amazed. And you're keeping the secret for them because you're the one that knows it. You cannot be amazed by it. But you can give them this, this feeling which is getting harder and harder to get in this life. Because we have science and we all become so freaking rational. And we go, yeah, of course, this works like this. And the sun goes down because of this. And the leaves grow because of this. And we don't realize because we're not scientists that, that we don't even know how it works. But this is just theories. Right. And maybe there's going to be a paradigm shift in the future. And we were like, oh, my God, we were so wrong. And in 200 years, they're going to tell us, oh, look at those idiots. They really believed that this and this was true. We don't know. But now we believe it's true. And I believe it. And, and, and I love the way that science works. But, but it's getting harder and harder every day to get that feeling, that feeling of astonishment and amazement and of how small you are. You need to see something really amazing, like the whole Milky Way in Africa or something to experience that feeling <laughs> again. Or a good magic trick. Yeah. There's something interesting there in the for or from, you know, in the from or for, what, what mm -hmm. he says about keeping secrets um, related to audience and mm -hmm. from my perspective you know and my philosophy being um mm -hmm. not being a magician you know what i'm what i'm talking about mm -hmm. uh, there's something interesting here for example i some many years ago i i remember i was i was in a musical theater group and i was mm -hmm. you know i i had a crush on a, on a girl you know and for me this girl was like very very interesting you know as a person you know um she used to do like many things you know she used to sing um blah blah you know ma ma many many things so i had like some references of her life but i didn't really mm, i didn't really know her you know so when when we decide to to talk to each other and we 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 had like the first date my my thoughts you know about her were about for example um, where where to go or what to do or what to talk about you know and i wanted to to know everything about her you know because i was very into into it you know very very intrigued you know about her life and everything but the thing is I could ask her, for example, I knew he was he was a singer. I could ask her about the rehearsals. But for me, mm -hmm. at this moment, I think the most attractive part would be like the performances or the projects about the singing thing, you know? And for example, her could have mm -hmm. talked to me about the rehearsals as well. So what I'm saying here, it's like if people go to the theater to 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 see the magicians if, if they if, if they are expecting like the, this person is hiding something it's like the same the same thing that if if i'm going to this if i could have gone to this date saying mm. maybe this person has has a boyfriend and he she didn't tell me anything you know mm. emmanuel or maybe this person is a killer a, a serial killer and she didn't tell me anything so, so the thing is, in my opinion, if if you if you if you have a perspective, if you have a, a point of view in here, mm -hmm. and you try to offer them something, they are going to 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 assume the character as well in this game, their their role, you know, and they are going to to play the game. If they don't accept it, it's very it, that they they try to realize that they they are like not into the thing you know mm. but uh, but but i don't know i don't know if i explain myself i don't know if you know what i mean but because we, we really think for example i i usually use you know like the secrets like something interesting on the show but the thing is i don't even i don't even have you know the conception of the secret like something that i want to talk about in the show just in mm. some moments but i don't try to find against them about yeah uh, the secret uh, doesn't exist. It's like no, I, I I don't going to argue. 
I don't going to have this conversation but, with them. But that's also this like some people like some depends on the person who asks, right? But but sometimes people, how did you do that? And then like, I mean Dutch people are very down to earth. Um, but like, how did you do that? And then some people say like, magic, <laughs> and they're like, how did you do that? If I don't feel like saying anything and just being a dick, I said really well. <laughs> Yeah, but this this question it sounds like very similar. But, but rather, I would answer with with sleight of hand. How did you do that? Well, you used sleight of hand. Really good sleight of hand. Yeah, probably. Or psychology or whatever, but whatever feels right in that moment to say to that person. Yeah, it depends on the person. It depends on the context. It's probably. Hmm? It's probably. Uh, do, do you see yourself, you know, in this situation on a theater, for example? Oh, yeah, but in the theater, people never ask me. Yeah, so that's why. So the thing is, the thing is probably... Even, even not after the show. They never come up to me. How did he do that? You know? Yeah, I don't know. May maybe in the camera rooms, you know, like in the in the dress room, you know, many people go to visit and to take some pictures. Um, and yeah, may may oh, how did, you, how did you do these things? But in a different way, you know, not, not like mm. they don't want to know the secrets. Like they are impressed, you know? Or the same to the singers or the, to the to the guitarist. Exactly. Or... So well, it's fair. It's fair. It's very often a way of like saying I don't know how you did that, but trying to be also interested. How how did you do that? You like genuinely. And the interesting thing is with that is like because sometimes one of my other answers is like, well, you don't want to know, and I say like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Or I don't think you want to know. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. <laughs> but Fred Caps has the best answer to this. <laughs> Fred Caps' answer to how did he how how did he do this is, yeah, but you're also not gonna ask the butcher how he, how he does it. <laughs> the butcher also doesn't tell you. <laughs> yeah. And the issue says, but did you like it though? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the thing, the thing is, I don't know. The, the question is, is going to be there, you know, for sure. Mm. The thing is, how to 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 handle, you know, the situation. To play with it, but that's this is one of those questions that you cannot say to. This is the way to answer this question. No, of course not. You know, like... because everyone is also going to ask it, like you said, with a different opinion. It's like. Either just being cute and nice and interesting. Whoa, how did you do that? Or, or just being amazed, like, what? How did you do that? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Hey, but it's like this kind of people who ask you, uh, how, is how is possible you, you, you love me so much or you like me so much or whatever, you know? Like, so there's something there, you know, about... Mm. the person and about the thing that they receive you know that mm -hmm. they feel and the same with magic you know because maybe mm. we can feel the same you know like i don't know <laughs> well, but yeah. you don't but i don't know for example we we don't usually ask this to our members or of the family you know and maybe mm -hmm. they have because we see this like something natural so maybe if we if we try to to use magic, you know, like the tool mm. to make real, you know, like or to to try to afford like the conflict, the dramatic conflict on the on the show, maybe they are going to see like something not natural, but something. The mm. thing is, it's really good that they ask about how did you do that because it's because it's something about the uh, rational conflict that that's very important. But at the same thing, it's like they they should try. My that's that's my point of view. They should try to 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 live, you know, this experience and and mm. express ex, express what they feel, you know, in different ways. If they want to say, how do you do that? Okay, say it. But if you want to to laugh, mm. just laugh. Or or if you want to cry, cry. So we should try mm. to 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 manage this to to create like different um, to provoke different it's, emotions. It's also a very honest question. Yeah. And and yeah, but but that also has to do, I guess, with the um, spectator how safe they feel, whether they can cry or laugh or do whatever. 
yeah. So ideally you would create the atmosphere if you have a show that we are all friends here and you can do whatever the fuck you want to do or we, we good, you know, rather than this is my show, you're going to shut the fuck up and watch me and the plot. Nah, but this is like, like my biggest annoyance with magic shows sometimes is that the magician kills the moment where people are like amazed and he says, you shouldn't have this moment. I get applause. And I think, oh my God, dude, please go fuck yourself. You just ruined a wonderful experience for these people because your fucking ego didn't get applause. Yeah. Oh, because you have to do a top change. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> like the guys, people usually applaud here. <laughs> <laughs> they look like a t- <laughs> like a T Rex, you know, trying to. to make <laughs> Please fucking applaud! Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> totally, totally. Oh my. Yeah, yeah. That's why I hate I hate Magic Galas so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Whoa, was that an orgasm? Yeah, it was a little orgasm. Finally, someone agrees with my opinion. I've been wishing for years that I could go to magic conventions, but not pay for the gala. Very often, that's not possible. Because <laughs> I never like the gala. It always sucks. It's always not nice. I don't know. I'm hating lectures now. I prefer seminars. Really? Yeah. Huh. I just hate lectures when they're from certain people. Yeah. Yeah. But seminars are great though. I remember not still not still not from those people, but <laughs> I remember Gavi's lecture on, on the session. <laughs> they 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 told him, Okay, everyone has like fifty minutes. You can you can do an hour. Gabi, que? And people was translating. Gabi, you can you can do uh, an hour because everyone has fifteen minutes. Just an hour. People say at least two hour or hours or a little bit more. Um, sorry, Gabi says one and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they said maybe maybe. One hour and fifteen minutes. It's the the longest, and we can. And people said, "Gabi, one and a half hour." And Gabi says, "Okay, one and a one one hour uh, um forty minutes." And he yes. did like one hour and fifty minutes or something like that. Exactly. Forty five. Uh, but it, it was like what the fuck, you know? And he couldn't finish the first piece of magic that he performed. <laughs> Just once, just one, you know, the, just the first one, you know, uh, it was really, really good because he was explaining everything, you know, and people were mm-hmm. like, oh my God, oh my God, they, they were impressed, amazed, you know, um, mm-hmm. it was amazing, um, yeah, yeah. So that's so Spanish, okay, one hour, 15 minutes, okay, got it. <laughs> okay, two hours, let's go. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So well, I think that's all for for today, isn't it? For today, yes, that's it. Yeah, we're gonna try to have a um, a surprise for next week. Surprise. We'll see if we can <laughs> if if we can handle the thing. I think, um, yeah. think so. I hope so. But um, yeah, we'll let you guys know. Keep you up to date. Thanks all of you for watching. If you enjoyed it, well, thank you. Watch next time. And uh, see you next week. See you next week. Thank you, guys.